No, but in all seriousness, like the law stuff, I just, I don't know, I love problem solving, thinking, and, uh, and arguing. I call it debating. But uh, to me, it was always kind of ingrained in me. But it was more the entrepreneurial side that was developed later in life that kind of drew me to do at least what I'm doing now. So you, go, you come out of school, uh, you become an attorney, right? you get your bar, and you go to a big law firm. Right, uh, you're working there for a few years. Uh, was it six years? Uh, yeah, about six years. Six years. Uh, how'd you like it there? I uh, did not. <laughs> you like it? Okay. Um, I don't know. It was working for in a corporate environment. I think you guys probably all can relate on some level. You guys are here at a startup networking event. It's not for everybody. Although certainly some people loved what they did at the firm I was at, but. For me, it was just very restrictive. I felt like I was working for the man, and I, I wanted out. So, so you leave, and then, and then what'd you do? So I left. I planned my exit for like three years. So like half the time I was there, I was kind of had my eye on the door out. My wife and I came up with this idea to start a fashion company. So she had no experience in fashion, but she liked clothes and bags. So said, okay, let's try it. So we set up a company, we were operating it and growing it for the two years uh, or three years when I was planning my exit. And so I decided one day to quit my job and just did that full time for three years. And then it didn't really work out, which is fine. It was a great experience. And then we decided to call it quits. We sold the IP and then this was about two and a half years ago, I decided to just start my own law firm. After I was going back to interview at the law firms that I left, like the same kind of vibe, I just, you know, I was like, I can't do this again. It was just against my nature. So I just, on a whim, just decided to start Beachy Law, and it kind of morphed into what it is now, which is just a law firm for startups. So let's take a step back. You became partners with your wife, right? So, you, so you're with her all day. You go home, <laughs> and you're with her again. How did that work out? It's part of why we folded it up, honestly. <laughs> it was constantly together, right? Yeah, I mean, like when you work with your spouse, partner, whatever, you, you could generate a lot of great ideas because, you know, it'd be like you're in bed at midnight and you do pillow talk and just coming up with these cool ideas, but you're also with them all day. And, you know, especially when a business is not doing well, and this is probably any partner, it doesn't have to be a romantic partner, but the stress of the financial stuff and especially when you're married when you're both working for a startup and business isn't doing well there's not enough money coming in to you know not only support the business but to pay for your lives you know it it, be, it comes to a head and uh it was a journey but and you learned a lot so what's something that you learned so you were ceo of the company what was the company called uh framework framework and what did the company do we made women's handbags so we had this whole concept of, we, we built a manufacturing facility in the garment district in, here in the city, and we made kind of made to order bags, custom uh, embroidery, stitching, monogramming, trims, materials, built out a whole tech platform where you could design it online, and we thought this was the greatest idea ever. And then of course, the logistics come to play, and then your margins, and how much these things cost, and the volume that you can or cannot get, all kind of come to a head, and I think that's kind of the challenge with retail, which is a separate conversation. But where, where was the beginning of the question? So, so the question was, uh, what did you do? Like, what was the company? You oh yeah, so we did women's handbags. Yeah, and so it was like DIY, like the people could build their own handbags. Is that what it was? Sort of. We we would have like, okay, here's here's six shapes you could choose from. Here are four materials: leather, different color leather, suede, cowhide canvas, whatever, and here are some trims you could put on, here are zipper pulls you could put on, or uh, you could get, you know, on leather you can get metallic monogramming, or if you had a canvas bag you can get leather stitched leather, stuff like that. It was fun. We had our moment with the influencer community, and uh, I mean, I learned it was the most expensive MBA, is how I learned it. Right, so when I came out of college, I started my first company, it was an online concierge, so this was back in 2004. And we basically went out and took inventory of like Broadway shows, hotel rooms, limo companies, and we packaged them up into experiences, right? Which was new back then, nobody knew what that was. And we would sell it, uh, like repackage it um, with the margins and sell it for a profit. Uh, we didn't have a business plan, we didn't know what we were doing, it goes out of business, we lose like 100,000, I lost 50, he lost 50, and I was so depressed. 
and my uh, my mentor goes to me, he goes, well, you just got a whole MBA for 50000 It's a great deal, <laughs> yeah. right? And I, I kind of like, at first didn't laugh, but then later on, as I, my life came back to normal, I <laughs> thought it was a funny It's scenario. true. <laughs> I mean, you, you know this because you've been through it, but I feel like so many young entrepreneurs, not even young in age, but just young in the journey, you know, uh, they're going to experience failures, like we both did, and you don't, you can't learn this shit in business school. Mm -hmm. You can teach you all, you can read all the books you want, but until you actually do it and fuck up a little bit and then figure it out and then fuck up some more, I mean, like, that's the kind of stuff that stays with you because you remember that feeling of, like, screwing, like, making a wrong decision and not saying they shouldn't make decisions, because you should, but, you know, learning from those and those are, like, the wounds, the battle scars that, you know, make you not forget those lessons. Well, absolutely, and I think now, especially when you grow up, you know, we're so trained to get the best grade, right? Don't fail your class, right? You gotta do your best, and then you will graduate, you will go to college, you'll get a profession, you'll go work for a big company. Uh, but then after the recession, we realized like, that might not be necessarily true, right? And that, sure. for sure. that as an entrepreneur, when you left your corporate job, you went in with your wife, you had to learn that you have to fail, that's how you can develop a better product. You have to test and learn, right? And that's something that a lot of new entrepreneurs struggle with because they feel like if they fail once, that they failed and that they need to walk away. Yeah, that and also, you know, just the consequence of failing. So, and it depends where you're at in life. You know, if you're 20 years old out of college, 21, you have a lot less to lose. But if you're 30, and uh, I think I was, 29 or 28 when I quit my job. Like, we had a lot to lose. We had a kid, our second kid had come like a year or two after I quit. Uh, we blew through all our savings and, you know, it's scary, but I would never have done it differently. So I guess the point is, is like, it's just your appetite for risk and not being, like if you really want to pursue something, and I guess it goes to why you're doing it, as long as that's a good reason, then to me it's worth the risk. But you just have to accept that it is a risk. And, yeah, and also, uh, a lot of times, sometimes people will get involved in something and say, I'm going to get in this industry because it's hot and I want to build a company around that. Sometimes that's not enough to take on the risk that you're about to take on, right? Um, so you started your law firm, you started working with clients. Let's talk about startups, right? And, and they're about to start a company or they're in business and they need legal uh, guidance. What's some things that startups should watch out for or pay attention to when they're starting out their company? So the way that I look at it is a lot of startups think they need more than they do from legal. And I guess that's kind of against my own interest to say that, but I do believe that you got to try to find the balance of like using templates that you find online when you can't afford to hire an attorney versus not just using a template without realizing what's in there. And really, the documentation is very streamlined now. You can find most documents that you need online. Like if you're raising money, you want to get a safe agreement, go to Y Combinator or Cooley. Like these things are out there. But I think they need to find advisors, legal and other, who, who like can explain what are in these documents and what they mean and how it actually applies to their business. So, you know, you're setting up a company, first thing you want to figure out is, okay, well, do I want to be an LLC or S Corp, C Corp, and Delaware. What the fuck is everybody going to Delaware for? Why are they going to Delaware? <laughs> the, a lot of corporate governance and a very strong body of law, but also it's very favorable for small businesses. And it's just easier to set up different classes of shares and for companies to, especially companies that are looking to get funding from VCs or angels, to set up these different classes of shares and to give these investors more comfort. But the truth is, it really, at the end of the day, if you take aside companies that are looking for VC funding, doesn't that make that big of a difference? I mean, you have a company in New York, it's not that much of a difference if you're going to do a New York corp versus a Delaware corp, if it's just going to be closely held by you and you're just going to build it up. So, you know, I just think not buying into these cliches that you hear that might apply to other startups in certain uh, sectors like tech who, you know, they want to do hyper growth, it's not going to be every company. So. Just understanding what makes sense for you. Like companies that are gonna be formed with two or three partners, where they're gonna be focusing on building an actual business, cash flow, probably wanna consider going with an LLC because it's just gonna be the two or three of them. 
trying to make profit, if you pass through income, it's much easier. But if you're going to be a company that's going to be looking to attract outside funding in the next, let's say, six to 12 months, probably want to go with the C Corp. And not even an S Corp, because I don't know if you guys know, but S Corps, you can't have multiple classes and shares. There's certain limits on the type of, you can only have individuals at best, you can't have different entities. So, like a VC could not invest in an S Corp. But they can invest in a C Corp. Right, so people get scared of this double taxation, but I think that's kind of, there's a misconception with that because it's there's a tax, corporate tax rate, they get taxed on the profits, and then it's dividends. A lot of the times it nets the same. I mean, you would want to talk to your accountant about it, but it's not like you're literally paying double tax than you would have, like double your personal income tax. So I think there's a lot of misconception. Because if you're, you're saying, I, and that, that, I had that misconception because I had LLCs a lot, so they, you know, small, couple partners and we flow it through. It worked well. Uh, but then when I was gonna raise money, I couldn't do the LLC unless it's like a real estate project. That's yeah. most of them are through LLCs. Uh, but through the corp, I was always, yeah, and a lot of times you can't get a straight answer from an accountant because they'll say, well, it all depends. And I'm like, well, now we well, how do I too. figure this out? Like now he's giving me 10 different scenarios. Um, so that's why I'm interested. So if I was starting, a, let's say a tech company and I was building an app that was going to be a marketplace, what would you suggest? I mean, it depends. <laughs> <laughs> but most likely it would be 